Good morning, everyone. I hope you find yourselves well today. Thanks for joining me. My name is Lily, and I appreciate you being here with me. And uh, I am here because I have a great show and tell for you. Uh, show and tell, and we're going to make a little project. We're going to make one of these cards. And we're going to make one of these cards in the same style as the index cards. And was it the index cards? The No, not the index cards. The card dividers. Let me show you. And if, if you haven't watched that video, I will link it at the very end so that you can see what I did. So these are, or these were index card dividers. And if I said that backwards, uh, I hope I st I, I'm still making sense. <laughs> so we're going to create some tags in the same style. Okay. Let me set those aside. And this is what I did. Now I worked on these late last night. I think I've mentioned recently that I'm, I'm having trouble sleeping. And so I just get up and I start crafting uh, for a little bit until I get sleepy and then that's it, call it a night. So this is what I did. And as I was working on this, I came across a happy accident and that's the show and tell part about this video. Uh, if, you, if you notice, I have um, this faux vintage tape that I've used on the tags. That was an accident. And I'll tell you how I came up with that idea. And I've seen videos, I think Nick the Booksmith has a video on how she creates vintage looking uh, faux vintage tape. And then there's been a few others circulating. So this was a happy accident for me because I don't have alcohol inks to do um, the other process, but I'm gonna show you an alternative to that. And I've used it here. And tell me that doesn't look like vintage like vintage um, scotch tape, tape that has aged over 20, 30, 40 years. And I've done it here as well. So I really like the way these turned out. And I'm repurposing uh, or altering some tags that I really didn't care for, these large tags, and I'll explain that in just a moment. And I really like this weathered look. It is, it's my favorite. And I've taken a little bit of the design for these tags from my own personal um, home design. And so I love chippy furniture. I love painted furniture. I love all things vintage. And so um, this right here is a reflection of my living space, okay? And so it's easy, it's easy to be able to draw inspiration from the things that are around you and recreate them on on items like this, okay? So if you struggle with what your style is, I think it will, it slowly evolves. Um, just look around, look around in your own space and draw inspiration from that. If you, you know, if you have polka dotted furniture, maybe you wanna incorporate polka dots into your project. So little things like that. And so that's what I've done. Okay, so let me set these aside for just a moment and show you how this was done. I'm also going to link the video as to how I created this, this um, wax paper. And I used packaging. Let me show you what the before looked like really quick. I'm coming, I'm coming. So this is packaging. This is the packaging that you get, like, for example, in Amazon boxes or in, um, yeah, uh, in shipping boxes. And they're really long. I cut them down, I've mentioned before to manageable sizes, which is eight and a half by 11, and then I file it away. And I waxed it, I'll link the video to show you how I did the waxing. And I also the other day did green waxing. Um, I had received green packaging, and so I also waxed green paper, and I'll show you what this looked like. So here's the green wax paper, okay? So those videos will also be linked at the very end of the video. Okay, so I had little scraps as I was working on the on the cards. I pulled out my scrap. I'm not going to call it a scrap box because it's a scrap lid. <laughs> and I was just pulling from here to collage. And this is what was in here. Little scraps of, of, um, of the wax paper from other projects that I've done. And so look at all the little bits and pieces that I save. And you guys, I really do use these little bits and pieces. Okay. So it was here on my desk and I saw it and I thought that looks like vintage tape. And so I put it over and I 
and you know it looked really good to me and so I started playing with it love the idea and so now I'm sharing it with you so I've taken the wax paper that I did I'm gonna set it aside and then I cut it I cut it into strips these are half an inch strips and from here I went ahead and and then just cut little pieces to use as faux tape and guess what worked to adhere to the tags glue stick and I had talked about how I wasn't sure um, what adhesive would work with the wax paper because I had used this and it peeled right out but surprisingly I tried the glue stick and so far so good it is on there okay so I thought we could make one of those tags one of those large tags, which is this right here, and uh, alter it and turn it into one of these right here. Little backstory to these tags. Now, I mentioned how I was limited in supplies when I first came to Utah, but I really wanted a craft. And I didn't want to spend a lot of money on crafting materials. So my sister and I went on a hunt to um, thrift stores to find inexpensive items that I could use. And that's how I started building my stash. Very little money and um, finding items like this in thrift stores to work with. Now, I don't care, these came in a package. I've never been a fan of these large tags. Um, I like to work with smaller tags, but, but my idea was to cut them in half and use them this way. But I gave it a try. I thought, let me work on a, on a large tag and see how it works out. And I love it. It will fit perfectly in a journal. And so that's why I gave it a try. So even though I didn't like the initial idea, the outcome was absolutely perfect. And, and I, I'm not a, you know, I just, I knew that I could work with it and I was going to take what I could um, at the thrift store. And so if you are limited in supplies, check your local thrift store for, uh, for items and don't just go to the home section or the paper section walk throughout the store because you can get inspiration from items in different different sections of the store and you're not going to spend a lot of money I didn't want to spend a lot of money because like I've said before I've got plenty of stuff to work with in California but while I'm here in Utah I still want to create I still want to have a good time okay let's not get too chatty I get really chatty so let's talk and work at the same time so the very first thing I did is I started collaging. So I reached into my scrap lid and I just pulled some papers out and began to collage. So let's do that and let's just glue some paper down. Okay. If you have, again, if you have packaging paper give the waxing give the wax a try it has it's that brown packaging paper now this right here is also packaging paper um, I've I am going to I will be doing some waxing on this paper as well I'm curious to see how that turns out but for some reason that brown paper really looks like vintage tape when it's cut into strips like this I don't know if you have all noticed in my most recent videos um, some of the noise in the background. I replayed some of my videos and I could hear it like in the distance. There is construction going on next door. Um, we are in a residential area. However, we are adjacent to a commercial area and so they're building a big office building. And so bright and early we get to hear all of the wonderful construction sounds. And so if you hear that in the background, that's what it is. Oh, did you see that? <laughs> Time for a new glue stick. Okay, let's, let's grab a new one here. There we go. I still have a couple of these Elmer's Craft and Bonds and they're within closer reach. So I'm reaching for these first. Um, I, I have the Uhus. They're just uh, over there. Okay. So I just started grabbing and gluing. I use these 
the scrap papers as my palette when I'm using the um, the chalk paint and I like I like the look right there mm. I want to bring that higher there okay I have to be really careful with this paper it is really old and brittle and if I ink the edges and use too much force, I'll actually chip the paper. <laughs> it's so brittle, it'll just snap in half. But it's great for collaging. Hope everyone is doing well. I'd like to know what projects you're working on right now. Let me know in the comments below what type of things you enjoy making. I like working on ephemera. I go through it really fast, especially when I'm working on on um, on junk journals. And I like to include a lot of ephemera in the junk journals, and so I want to make sure I always have plenty. some of the larger pieces to collage so if you are new to collaging um, just start with what you have but it is easier if you work with some of the larger pieces of scraps that you have and if you don't want it to be too bulky use um, use thin papers let's see here okay And that'll make it so that your items don't get too bulky, especially if your base material is a little bit thicker. Um, it's not that heavy cardstock, but it is it is pretty thick, thicker than than these papers. I went out and checked on my garden this morning and it's looking good it's looking good I'm excited I know it's my dad's garden but I kind of took over I hope he doesn't mind I don't know how long it'll be before I start seeing the fruits of my labor <laughs> I'm ready to make a salad <laughs> I'm just hoping that the plants thrive Okay, let's see what else. Okay, so now I'm going to take, let's take a flower right there. Uh, I was hoping to have something that was already fussy cut. I keep putting it off. I keep saying that I'm going to fussy cut on the nights that I can't sleep. But I end up doing other projects because... I don't know why, just whatever comes to mind. So I'm going to do some really quick. It might be a little bit sloppy, but it works out. There are no rules when it comes to fussy cutting. And then I'm going to ink the edges slightly. I'm going to glue it down. I'm going to speed things up because I want my video under 30 minutes. The reason is my camera will cut me off at 33 minutes. <laughs> and then it's also easier and quicker to upload when I don't make them too long. Okay, then the next thing I did is I took one of these label stickers that I've already inked up and then doodled around. Let's put that right there. Whoops, it'll fall off. It doesn't have a lot of sticky. Oh, that one's stuck a little bit. They're old and so they don't have a lot of sticky backing. Oh, 
That one's actually better. And let's take a word. I'm going to use a, ca a calico collage word. Do, 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 do. I'm going to use this one that says delight. They're all beautiful words. I just don't want to spend too much time choosing one. I know it would be easier to have all of these cut up and ready to go, but then actually thumbing through the little pieces might take more time. Ink the edges a little bit. Okay, let's glue that one down. What? Okay, I'm going to put that there. It doesn't have to be centered. And then my new favorite thing to do is to use this um, chalk paint. This is my new thing to do. And so I'm just going to put a little bit of the chalk paint on a scrap piece of paper. And then I'm going to take, here's this. So I'm going to use this as my brush. Okay, I'm going to distress it just a little bit. And I'm just kind of doing that. And I really like this technique because it looks like it's it's weathered. I talk about it in the other video. And then I just kind of do that. Have you ever, have you ever, oh, I did this. <laughs> I was playing with a, with this, a, a DIY spray. I'll tell you what it is in just a moment. Um, have you ever painted the outside of your house and had paint fall on your rose bushes or your plants? I remember that happened when I was growing up and my mother had rose bushes outside her house and the house was um, repainted and I remember her being upset because all of her rose bushes had paint on them. And this is what that reminds me of. And I know she was upset, but those were, you know, <laughs> those were good memories of where we used to live. Okay, isn't that wonderful? And then the next thing I did, and I'll let that dry and then use it in the collage. I like the way that looks. Okay, the next thing I did is I took one of my little pieces of faux of my fake tape, fake vintage tape, and I'm gonna glue the back. Just glued it, and now I'm going to stick it there. That makes all the difference right there, you guys. Doesn't that look? It is transparent. It looks like it's yellowed over the decades, and it looks wonderful. I love this so much. I I just can't get over that. And that was a happy accident. Just uh, so give that a try. And then what else does it need? Oh, I know what it needs. Let's give it some gold because I've talked about how this is my my newest obsession, Vintage Gold by Prima Wax. I haven't even gone in there. I'm still using what is on the lid. Let's use a little bit there. Smells like shoe polish a little bit. Okay. Can you see that there? It is a very subtle shimmer and it may not be easy to pick it up in camera, but it really is there. Can you see that? It is wonderful. Whoops, I poked it. I spoke too soon about not dipping into there. Now my finger did. Uh, let's... I'm not left-handed, so. <laughs> oh, 
Oh, and let me, I want to say how I did this. Okay. So I have a little spray bottle of dye. And so I was testing out the color and that is the result is that spray there. What I did is I used some of this stuff <laughs> to, try, to try to make my own spray. It worked out. And the reason I'm using this is because I gave it a try with blue dye that was in my mother's laundry room and it turned out really well. And so so this one has, it's a, it's a dark brown color, but it has a little bit of a, of red in it, like a magenta. So I might add more ink in here to make it a darker brown. Okay. So, but there you go. Tell me what you think. Tell me what you think of that. I'm again, I'm going to link the video as to how to make this wax paper using brown packaging. And I'm wondering if you can get the same results. If you don't have brown packaging, if you can use the brown lunch bags or even brown grocery bags, I'm sure you can probably get the same effect, especially from the lighter weight lunch bags. So give that a try. And I'm sure it'll work just as good. But I love these so much, you guys. Look at that there. Look at that one. This right here was an actual tag that I repurposed from an item I purchased at an antique store. So that one also has a little bit of the shimmer. I know I've said, I know I didn't like the large tags, but I love this. I love the whole look of this. Um, this weathered look is my latest obsession. To, so don't be surprised if you see it in everything I make um, from this point on. <laughs> You guys, thank you so much. Let me know if you're going to give this a try. Um, I'd like to know what you're working on. You know, thank you so much for being here. Um, if you haven't already subscribed to my channel, please do so. And uh, let me know what you think. You guys enjoy the rest of your day. And uh, I'll talk to you soon. Thank you so much. Take care. Bye.